Okay. So today, Sunday, 26th August 2018, we'll read from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16, from verse 14 to 20. Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 16, from verse 14 to 20. And it reads, Later he appeared to the eleven, to the eleven, as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Let us pray. Wonderful and eternal God, Father, we thank you for your word, your everlasting word, your word that is sharper than a two-edged sword that divides even between bone and marrow. Father, we thank you that your word pierces right into our hearts. When you met the two uh, uh, disciples on the way to immerse on your day of resurrection, you spoke to them and they said, did, did our heart not burn when he was speaking? You, we recognize you by the impact you have on us. So, Lord, we ask that your word will have the impact on us, that your word will be like water right now. Wash away every dirt. Pierce through our hearts, O oh Lord. Renew our minds, O oh Lord. Help us to live the life that you want us to live so that we will live in the power of that resurrection that you gave to us, the authority that you gave to us as believers. We thank you, Lord for loving us so much, for trusting us so much with such immense power, with such immense love, unconditional. You just give it without measure. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much and determining our end right before the beginning. Blessed be your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Right. Um, the title of our message of today is My Authority in Christ Jesus. My authority. You have to personalize it. What is my authority? How, what authority do I have as a believer in Christ? What impact is my belief in my life, in the lives of those around me, in this world? What impact do I have in the world as a believer in Christ Jesus? So the title is My Authority in Christ Jesus. Amen? Okay. So um, other than that, uh, Matthew 16, let's just flip over to, oh, sorry, we read Mark 16. So let's go to Matthew 28. We just read Mark 16. Let's go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. From verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, 
even to the end of the age. Amen. Okay? So, let us at the same time uh, look at the Gospel of John chapter 20. Gospel of John chapter 20. John 20 and verse 29. Mm. Okay, let us rather read from verse. Let us read from verse 24. It doesn't matter. It's the word of God that, that helps us to see the light. The word of God is light. It's power. So, um, John chapter 20 from verse 24. Now, Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. That means when he came the first time after the resurrection. The other di disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Verse 26, And after eight days, the disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen yet have believed. Amen? Amen. So let's go to the same John, chapter 17, verse 20. The same Gospel of John, chapter 17, and verse 20. And Jesus said, I do not pray for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So this, you know, Gospel of St. John chapter 17, the whole chapter is just the prayer of Jesus, the, the intercessory prayer of Jesus on, for his disciples and for us of, to, of, of this age, of today's world. That's why he said there, because he knew that the disciples then had to go out and preach the gospel. So he prayed now because we know God has always been the God of the whole earth. He only chose to start with the Jewish people. And so Jesus said, I do not pray for these only, that's those who were present with him, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. And that is our, our com, com, uh, commandment, our commitment, our, you know, the, the, the job, the, the, the assignment that Jesus gave us in, in, uh, in Matthew that we read and, and, and Mark. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. So there are, there's no discussion. It's nobody's opinion. That's God's word. And his word is eternal. If you believe, you are saved. You don't believe, you are gone. Only one person died for us. And it is only that person that came from heaven that knows the way back to heaven. If we want to live eternal life, it is only through Christ, in Christ, and by Christ and with Christ. And that is the authority that we have in Christ Jesus as believers. That we have power to, to, to change people's lives. If you believe, you are saved. If you don't believe, so when we preach the word, 
We have to know what we are preaching. Don't give anybody your opinion. Tell them what God himself said. Because it is God's words that Jesus says, the word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So God's word is life-giving. God's word is life-giving. So we have to depend completely and totally on the word of God. And that word himself is Christ. Because he was the word from the beginning. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And, and it is that word that gives life to the world. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So without Jesus, you have no life. You can argue that, you can believe it, you don't have to believe it. It's your business. Jesus alone died, and only in his name are we saved. It is salvation is in the name of Jesus. So we, have, we don't have to believe. We can search the Bible ourselves. Atheists, you know, strong, intelligent atheists have taken up the Bible and tried to disprove it and they ended up saying, you know what, there's nothing like the Bible. It's not a human, it's not, it didn't come from human knowledge. So either we make up our minds to look for the truth and nothing but the truth, or we can just continue to live a life of a lie. We can just continue to live a lie, not wanting to know what is happening, just, you know, living by the motions. So Jesus is the word of God, and that word can never be broken. And that is what we have that is different from others. And we pray that they should also see this light, because light in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Without him, there's nothing. There's nothing. So let us just uh, be open in our minds and, and look for the truth ourselves. Not just say, oh, that pastor said. No, it's not what the pastor said. What do, does God say? What does the word of God say? It's not what the prophet said. What does God say? That's what we should do. Okay? So let us go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 23. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, I'll read from verse 17. This is Paul, who was the one persecuting Christians, who thought, you know, the early Christians were, were doing nonsense until... He too found out the truth. And this is what Paul, the prayer that Paul is praying to the people of Ephesus. So starting from verse 17, so he, he said, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We have to want to know God. He's asking that you should want to know God. Not just believe any nonsense you hear. Make up your mind to find out who is this God. These people say that, that people say that, but what is the truth? So he said, I pray that the, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, everybody say, oh, we have one God. Yeah, look for him. Who is the true God that you should worship in peace, in love, in truth? The Father of glory. If your God is not glorious, throw it away. He is the Father of glory. He is spirit. If you can carry your God around, throw it away. It's not God. If you can manipulate your God, throw it away. It's not God. 
Because you cannot manipulate almighty, glorious God. He is the God of truth. He only acts in truth and righteousness. So I pray that the, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Why has he called you? Why are you searching to know him? And it continues. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? If you worship this God, what is your inheritance? What are you getting out of it? Because the God I worship, you don't worship him in vain. You don't worship him as a slave. He has called you into the family. He has adopted you to be like him, like father, like child. He gives you his wisdom. He gives you his knowledge. He gives you his glory. You inherit the goodness of almighty God, the God that gives light every day you wake up. So we, the saints, we, the children of God, have an inheritance in him. Riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, in the believer. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? That's the authority. Power. The power he gives to those who believe. Others see his power, but you know his power. You experience it. He gives it to you. You have that power and authority. And that power is according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So the power that God gives you is resurrection power. The same power that, that brought Jesus up from the tomb. The same power, they beat him, they nailed him, they buried him, and this power brought him back to life. That's the power we have. That's the authority we have. The power of resurrection. Resurrection power. That means nothing is impossible. Jesus raised the dead. You can raise the dead. Because that authority and power has been given to you and me. But we just have to exert it. Believe it and walk accordingly. It is not hocus pocus. It's not magic. It's you spending time with Jesus and understanding, knowing God. Like Paul said at the beginning. That you would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Once you know him as he is, then you can do what he does. Then you don't treat him as a thing. You know he, that he is the power that is ruling the world. So this power God gives to you and me. Think of what we can do. And others are paying money for it and you are getting it free. Just by reading the Bible and spending time with Jesus. People go to Satan and pay money to receive power and do all sorts of things. And God is saying, just come to me. The same power that, that was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead. And, sit, and now he's seated at his right hand in the heavenly places. That's the power you and I have. As believers in Christ. And he seated. Verse 21. Far above all principality. And power. And might. And dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this age. But also in the age. Which is to come. So beyond human imagination. Beyond this life. Beyond anything you can think of. 
Otherwise, it will not be God. If it's not bigger than you, then throw it away. It's not God. He is seated far above, far, far, far above all principality and power. Jesus is the head of all principalities. You check your power that you have. If, if, if it comes under the authority of Christ, then keep it. If not, I mean, he, 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 he steps down on anything else. He's seated far above all. So nothing comes close to him. Nothing comes close to him. He's seated far above. And that's what it means. No, no, no comparison in any shape, in any form. Above all principality, all power, all might, all dominion, any name that is named, not just in this age, not in this generation, not in this world, but in all ages, yesterday, today, forever. And verse 22 and 23. And he put all things under his feet. That's what I'm talking about. Everything is under his feet. Because he's far above all. And God gave him to be head over all things to the church. So it is the church. The church is his inheritance. We inherit all this that I'm describing. Because we are his body. But he, he is the full, he, uh, uh, and, and let me just read it as it is. So from verse 22, and, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So imagine you are out of Jesus. Where do you think you are standing? Nothing. You have no, no, no ground to stand on because he feels all in all. And if you are not that part of all in all, then you are gone. That's why he is bold in, 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 in Mark. He says, the ones that believe are saved. The ones that don't believe are condemned. Full stop. Because when you are outside of him, you have nothing to stand on. He feels all in all. All the heavens, all the earth, under the earth, everywhere you can imagine. All the galaxies, whatever vocabulary you want to dig out, he feels all in all. So if you are not part of that all in all, you are an outsider and you are condemned because you have not, not, no grounds to stand on. If Jesus has all, where do you stand? We have so much power we have no idea. We have just no... Imagine the God of heaven and earth, creator of everything we know and we don't even know. Scientists are still digging, still trying to find after all these years. And there's still more to find. And we have power. By revelation, you can know what a scientist has been looking for for 50 years. Just one little revelation in the presence of God. They, they are looking for, uh, you know, cure for cancer. In, in the presence of God, cancer is being healed every day without explanation. We have so much power, we have no idea. Let us go to even the Old Testament to see this power. Yes, in Christ we have all this power by, by inheritance, but let's go to the, to the Old Testament, the book of Ezekiel, and see what happened. Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11. Which is from verse 1 to 25. But I don't think I'll read all that now. But it talks about. Like, let's just start from verse 1 to, to give it um, some footing. So, Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 1. Then the Spirit, that's the Spirit of God, lifted me up 
and brought me to the east gate of the Lord's house, which faces eastward, and there at the door of the gate were 25 men, among whom I saw Jaazaniah, the son of Azor, and Pelatiah, the son of Beniah, princes of the people. Okay? And he's, the Lord said to me, Son of man, these are the men who devise iniquity and give wicked counsel in this city. So by revelation, God took, uh, opened Ezekiel's eyes and, and showed him these people. There were 25 men, but these two are mentioned exactly. He said, he said among all this, these, this group of people are the ones who are devising iniquity in this city. And they give wicked counsel. And the Lord said, um, Okay, let, let's start from verse, like I said, I don't want to read everything, but let's read from verse 10. He says, you shall fall by the sword. So the Lord is declaring judgment on those people. He's telling Ezekiel all the things he has to say, but I don't want to read all. So, but from verse 10, the Lord says, you shall fall by the sword. I will judge you at the border of Israel. That means outside the city. Then, like I said, when you are not in, you are out. I will judge you at the border. Why didn't God judge them inside the city? God took them out. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 11. This city shall not be your cauldron or your pot, nor shall you be the meat in its midst. I will judge you at the border of Israel. Verse 12. And you shall know that I am the Lord, for you have not worked walked in my statutes nor executed my judgment but have done according to the customs of the gentiles which are all around you so since you like to behave like the outsiders i will judge you outside there okay and verse 18 this is where i'm going now it happened while i was prophesying that palatia the son of benaiah died then I fell on my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Ah, Lord God, will you make a complete end of the remnants of Israel? So this is a prophet just saying as the Lord says he should do. And then somebody falls down in real life and dies. And that's why he was alarmed because he didn't know the power of his word. He just thought he was speaking. But as he was speaking the word of God, somebody actually fell down in real life and died. And that is not satanic power. That is not wickedness. That is God's judgment for them to know that he is God. And when he says something, he, he stands by it. These are the people that are causing trouble in this city. And since they choose to live like the outsiders, I will judge them outside there like the outsiders. That's why it says, if you believe, you are saved. You are in. If you don't believe, you are out. And you'll be judged like the outsiders. And this is real life. We are not talking. This is Old Testament. The prophet was just speaking. And somebody actually fell down and died. And he was alarmed. And Jesus is like, I have come. I've taught you. I've shown you the power of the Father. Now go in my name and do the same. And because Jesus is meek and mild, people think he's not the same judge who will judge the world. Think again. Right now he's operating in love. He wants you to see all his goodness. He heals the sick. He raises the dead. He is kind. He is, he is, he is mild and gentle. But he is still that God who rules who feels all in all. And he is the judge of the whole earth. Because he died for the whole earth. He died for everyone. So he will judge everyone. And it's not a question of standing and discuss, dis, discussing with him. 
who look 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 in the court, even in the court in this world, who who stands around and and discusses with the judge, they'll give you contempt of court. Doesn't happen. You can't just go there and say, be, 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 be. no, shut up. Because you have sworn by oath to speak the truth and nothing but, but the truth. And Jesus did not cast out Lucifer from heaven. The angels did it. So when we say God is above all, he's above all, you cannot compare Jesus to Satan. He's above Satan. He's above any power, any principality, all dominion. He doesn't stand and, and have a chit chat. He told, even, even in, in the wilderness where he was tempted, he said, get me behind me, Satan. That's authority, that's power. You, you should know who you are. Don't sit, sit around and discuss with idiots because they are, they are wasting your time. If you know who you are, then sit in those heavenly places with Christ Jesus and rule with him and reign with him because that's your authority as a believer. That's your inheritance because you believe in the one that died for you. He's there to do you good and not harm. He came to save you from death and bring you into life. People without hope they say, oh, I've worked, and when I'm maybe 60, 65, 70, I retire, and then I rest, and before you know, they are dead. Because the human being needs to stay active. Because they have no, no knowledge of God's plan. Christians grow from strength to strength. The Bible says that the righteous is like a palm tree planted in the house of the Lord. He still bears fruit at, in old, at old age. So you don't die. You walk until the day Jesus says, come along. And you just transit. But the other ones just waste their time and die. They are, they are strong when they are young. And, they are, and when they are old and feeble, they die. While a Christian is dead in sin and comes alive in Christ. So you, you grow from life to life, from glory to glory, from, from strength to strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The young men can, can think that they can run, but they that wait upon the Lord cannot run them. Remember Elijah, outrunning horses by the power of God. It's not about toil, it's, it's about knowing God. It's not about what your brain can tell you. Transform that brain and say, God, give me revelation. Moses got the revelation of how God created the world. We, we, we talked about Job the other day. God told him, have you commanded your morning since the days began? God gave him the revelation of, of how to take authority over his day, over his life, over everything he owns, over everything he wants to do. Authority in Christ. Author my authority in Christ as a believer. More than you can think of or imagine. So we have to renew our minds. Train our consciousness and subconsciousness. And learn to understand who we truly are. Who am I in Christ Jesus? What does it mean to walk in this power? What does it mean to walk in this authority? This God-given authority. Am I going to use it for good or am I going to use it for bad? What is resurrection power? How is this different from the way the enemy operates? Because there's all kinds of power out there. And the Bible tells me that the devil comes to kill, steal, destroy. That's what he uses his power to do. To kill, to steal, to destroy. But Jesus comes to give eternal life so that you grow from dead to life. Because the, the soul that sinned sin must die. So we were dead in sin and Jesus came and gave us new life. So we are progressing, not degressing. 
So we have to ask ourselves, what good am I doing to others in the name of Jesus? How am I using this power to enrich my life, the, peop- the lives of the people around me, my generation, my, my neighborhood? How do I demonstrate the love of Jesus with this power and authority that he has given to me? What can I do with this power to glorify Jesus? Because he died for me. He gave me that authority. He gave me that power. He said, go in my name and heal the sick. So that's what we can do. He says, go in my name and cast out demons. That's what we can do. Relieve people of their burden in the name of Jesus. Forgive their sins. I know it sounds crazy, but Jesus himself said that. Whoever sin you forgive is forgiven. We see the power that we have. Okay. Maybe you think I'm just saying it. Let's go to John chapter 20. Gospel of John chapter 20. Verse 23, because I don't have time to read. Otherwise, you should read probably from verse 19 to 23. If you forgive the sin of any, they are forgiven them. If you return the sin of any, they are returned. That's why John, in his epistle, said, there are sin that does not you know, lead to death. But there are sins that, that, that lead to death. Pray for the sin that don't lead to death. The one that lead to death, don't pray for them. Because those people did it, you know, you know with their... That, like you've, you've been trying to preach to them, you've been trying to help them, you are, advise them and do, and they still refuse to listen. Don't bother about it. Because we all have a heart and a conscience. We know when to stop. So Jesus is saying, and, and that's what it says in Matthew 18, 18. I have to show you guys. Matthew. Still talking about this authority. Where is it? Yeah. Matthew 18, 18. As shortly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. That's authority. Joshua said, son, stand still. And the son stood still. Old Testament. Read Joshua chapter 10, verse, around verse 10 too. Yeah. This, you know, this kind of passages, you, you, it's easy to... I mean, the Bible is such a marvelous book. And certain things are so strategic, the way they are placed. So, you, you know, I think it's a book for dummies. <laughs> it, it helps you not to even walk your brain. So, first in, in Joshua 10.10, 10, the Lord routed the, the enemies before Israel. And he ran down large hailstones to destroy them. And then further in verse 12. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said to this, in, he said, in the sight of all Israel, son, stand still over Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped. Till the people had revenge upon their enemies. That's authority in Christ. And he, he, he specifically told, told the sun and the moon where to stand. You sun stand still over Gibeon. And you moon stand still in the valley of Ajalon. Specific. When you know who you are. It's not about conjuring things. Paul said that you may know him. When you start to know him, when you have real fellowship with him, 
then he releases that power. He's not the one you go and conjure power and use it and do nonsense. Because with this power, you know that you are acting in place of God. That's why we are the ambassadors of Christ. You are representing Jesus. And he did not, he said, I did not come to judge the world the first time. I came to teach you. I came to make the Father manifest. I came to show you the truth. So that you can really now choose on which side you want to be. Because that day will come when there will be no more time to choose. So we have that authority and power to heal the sick, cast out demons, forgive sin, uh, uh, speak in tongues. You know, just help people by the power of God. Jesus showed his hands to Thomas who doubted. And there, there are people on the internet who say they are Christ. I wonder where the marks of the uh, um, crucifixion, crucifixion is on their hand. Search the scripture for the truth. Don't just believe what somebody says. When Jesus told the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, carry your mat and walk. The, the, the Pharisees are like, who is this but God who can forgive sin? You see, now you are God. He has given you the authority to forgive sin. The sin you forgive is forgiven. The sin you return is returned. This, the same thing that made the Pharisees marvel is the same thing that Jesus has given to us. Marvelous power. Marvelous authority. And it is all the power of God. Because that Luke chapter 5 verse 17, you know, with the story of the paralyzed man, he says the power of God was present to heal. So when you walk on the street and you walk with the power of God, the power of God goes with you wherever you go. And when the Holy Spirit tells you, look, that guy has a bad leg, speak to it and let it stretch out and, and heal. And you just do it. Because my sheep hear my voice, and they know my voice, and they do what I tell them. They obey me. So it is the power of God that heals. And that's why we must go to him, go in his name, know him, walk in fellowship, not do our own thing. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, according to, to Romans 10.10 10 as well. See, these things just show themselves up. So we have to know these times that we live in. This is time for end time glory. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is no respecter of persons. He shows no partiality. He says, whosoever will may come. There's no partiality. You can read that in that Romans 10 as well. And Romans 2. Yeah, Romans 10, 20, Romans 2, 11, Acts of Apostles, chapter 10, from 34 to 35. And the conclusion is, never take the glory. The glory is not yours. The power is not yours. Don't take credit for the things you do in the name of Jesus. If you do it in the name of Jesus, it is him doing it, not you. Never take the glory. Give all the glory to Jesus. We, we have been called, we have been sent. The authority is in his name. The demonstration of power is in his name. And Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so I send you. And he used to say, when whatever I see, what the, whatever the Father does, and I see, that's what I do. So all the miracle working power is in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I in the Father and the Father in me. And so also you must be in me. So he does the greater works through me. He does the greater works. I am just the vessel. He is the head. I am the body. So whatever authority I, I have, it is in Jesus. 
It is Jesus who died and rose again. If you read that, if you read that Acts chapter 10, I said earlier, you see around verse 40, him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly. So he alone must be glorified. Whatever we are, we are all that in him. And we give him the trophy, we give him the glory. It, he is the winner and he takes it all. Amen? Amen? Jesus is the winner and he's the same yesterday, he's the same today, he's the same forever. The same thing he did for the Jews, he's doing for the Gentiles. All he says is, whosoever will may come. If you believe in me, you will be saved. If you don't believe, you are condemned. And salvation is in the name of Jesus. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It is the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for taking time to explain these things to us. These are the words that you wrote down thousands of years ago, from the Old Testament to the New. Father, and we can always go back to the drawing board. This is our life's lessons. This is our, our handbook to live the kind of life you want us to live. And you wrote it all down. You put it all down. And we can always go back and consult the handbook so that we can live the life that you sent us in this world to do. We are here to represent you. Jesus said, I'm not praying that you should take them away from the world, but I'm praying that you should preserve them. So my Lord and my God, preserve us on this journey that you have sent us out. Preserve us, O Lord, and give us your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding. Give us your power and your authority to do the things you used to do, to surrender our wills unto you and know that we are the clear and you are the potter we are your vessel holy spirit live in us walk through us so that we can truly represent jesus because on our own we can do nothing blessed be the name of the lord we bless you god the father god the son god the holy spirit through jesus christ our lord amen amen amen